Hi everyone. Here I am at the 58th escapade of a group of RVers that uh, has an annual rally. This was one of the goals I had uh, when I first started to full-time RV way back in, in way back. Some people have been doing this 12 years and I've been doing it like since the middle of March. Anyway, um, this was my goal uh, was to make sure where my travels took me. I had two things to do. One was to get out to Sedalia, Missouri for the annual escapade. I wanted to experience that with and hopefully make some contacts and friends along the way uh, because there's, a, there's well over 100 and almost 150,000 uh, members nationwide and uh, make some contacts, which I've started to do, good, glad to say. And uh, then, of course, I need to get back to um, uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for the summer. So those are my only two vague type goals. So whatever happened in between was was just uh, was gravy and certainly a lot of fun. And I'm glad that many of you have come along the way. Something I have never done that I've seen some other YouTubers do is an unboxing. And uh, Doug on it, there's two things that, that I have always wanted um, as far as equipment is concerned for this RV lifestyle. Both of them actually, I, I think, qualify as safety equipment. Uh, the first uh, that is probably the least exciting is a tire pressure and temperature monitor. Um, as a kid, and, and certainly as a, as a probably most of my adult life until I got into the the driver education uh, industry, uh, tires to me were just great big round donut, black donut things. I wanted them to last forever and pay as little as possible for them, which I, I still think is a, is a Pretty worthwhile goal, uh, mutually exclusive, of course. But anyway, um, I didn't understand. I don't think really thought how how important they are to the safety and operation of, of your vehicle. Um, there's really only a patch about that big, four of them that uh, attach your vehicle to the road. And boy, they better be working, or you're not going to have any steering capability. You won't be able to stop. You won't be able to start, and all those kinds of things. So tires are critically important. And I think any of us who have, whether you're an RV or not, if you've traveled an interstate, if you've traveled even some of these uh, roadways where there's a lot of trucks, um, I learned a new term while I was here this week, uh, and that's uh, road gators, road alligators, and those are those big strips of um, uh, tire, rubber, that have come off of truck tires when they've exploded for a variety of reasons. And what I've come to understand is uh, two, two things uh, that generally happen is they get too hot, and they get too hot because they've lost pressure somehow. That they're they're not properly inflated. I also learned that a an overinflated tire is far less uh, of a hazard than, in fact, isn't a hazard at all uh, when compared to an underinflated tire. So um, most modern vehicles today, and I, I forget when the year was where it was almost mandated that uh, uh, vehicles have tire pressure monitors. And you get a little message on your dashboard when a tire is uh, probably two or three psi pounds per square inch, uh, less than what the recommended uh, 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 air pressure is. You get notified, but there is no such thing uh, like that on RVs, and certainly not on fifth wheels and travel trailers uh, like I'm pulling. Uh, if you're wondering what I'm doing off here to the side, you know, all I need to do is like being on the cell phone. Jacob, the standard poodle recognizes that you've got my attention and I want to talk to you. So he's decided that he needs my full attention and he's got his head in my lap and uh, is insisting that I pay attention to him. Anyway, back to my story. So uh, rather than have that happen, uh, I have a tire pressure gauge and um, so it's important for me as I'm going down the road to also be able to monitor how are those tires doing. So I got one of those. <laughs> The only thing, and I said this to the guy I bought it from because he was one of the uh, seminar presenters in boot camp, which was, if you've been following me, that's the, uh, for brand new people uh, to this RV lifestyle. Uh, there was a two and a half day seminar for us, probably two full day seminar uh, for us on just uh, a lot of the basic kind of information that we need to know. But one of the things that occurs to me is, uh, so I know I have uh, low tire pressure, then what? Because 
you know, pulling a 35-foot trailer with the length of the truck itself into your local gas station is just isn't going to happen. Plus, truck tires, RV tires generally have higher pressures, like anywhere from 80 to 100 pounds per square inch. So as a result, uh, I'm not going to be able to feed quarters into one of those machines, even if I could get close to it. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is buy a compressor. I'm going to talk to the gentleman over there where I purchased the tire pressure gauge and uh, get some thoughts from him because I think uh, the way I was going to go, I may not need to do that, and I'll get into more detail when I uh, do the boxing, unboxing for, for that, and that'll be in the next day or two. But for today, what I decided to do, this is probably the one that's a little more glamorous, and I'll be showing this in more detail. You can see it rather than me. It's a, an RV GPS. Now, I have certainly uh, my cell phone. I have uh, Google Maps. I've got Apple Maps because that's what comes with it. Uh, however, any GPS has got its limitations, whether it's Apple or Google. Uh, the cell phone, the limitation I have there is, and this is true with the, the truck GPS, which I'll talk about in just a minute. The GPS that comes with the cell phone wants to get you there in the fastest possible manner in the shortest distance. And of course, they're talking and built for people who are driving cars. So uh, two times now already in my short RVing experience, I have missed turns. I've been uh, needed to be rerouted. And the rerouting put me on, and I followed it because I didn't know any better. Uh, the rerouting took me on roads where I absolutely had no business being, and as a result, I'm lucky to be alive today. I mean, uh, those GPSs will take you on roads on na in neighborhoods. It'll take you on roads where, I mean, you don't even have a yellow line down the middle of the road, especially out in rural Arkansas and Missouri. So that's a problem. That has been a problem. The, uh, the other issue for me is, uh, and this is, I'm sure, user error, I cannot get either Google or Apple to reliably announce the turns and exits and things as they come up. And I'm a solo RVer, so it's really important. I don't have a, a partner sitting beside me to say, hey, you know what, the next exit's yours. So it's really important, even though I kind of see that it's coming up, uh, sometimes it's just not clear. And if I get distracted for just, you know, which for me is easy, if I get distracted a little bit, uh, I can go right on past an exit and then get myself into some trouble because it's not the audible signal that I need as well as the visual. Uh, I really love my truck. I'm a Nissan uh, Titan XD diesel truck. I love the thing. And it's got a great big uh, screen. It's super. It's reliable as far as talking to you is concerned but it's limited in the places it can find, and <clears throat> I cannot put in coordinates. In other words, GPS coordinates, uh, it, it can't handle. So I'm really, really recognizing in just a limited amount of time that, that I've traveled that I need something a little better. And so there were two contenders. Uh, one I was looking at at Amazon, and that's Garmin. Garmin is certainly uh, an industry name that we all know and recognize and trust. And the other was Rand McNally, who certainly is a name we all know. And Rand McNally, of course, is responsible for most of the maps and the atlases that we find in U.S. roadways. Um, the only reason I went this route is because it was on sale. That's one of the nice things about coming to these rallies. There's lots of vendors and lots of good pricing. And uh, talking to him, kind of got to uh, know him because he and his wife were presenters at the boot camp. And he said, you know, we could have sold Garmin. Um, they're both fine units. Uh, you would be happy and well served with either one. We chose this one and he went through a couple of the benefits uh, that made this one stand out to him and it just so happens those are the ones that, that I appreciate too. Uh, one namely being uh, the split screen. For those of you who have GPS's like this and probably many of you do, when you're coming up to an interchange on a highway or whatnot, it'll split the screen and you will get the intersection in a larger view with much more detail. And with the uh, Rand McNally, uh, what I'm told is it'll split the screen 60-40. So 60% will be the intersection, 40% will be the larger overview. So that I found uh, would probably be helpful uh, for me. So rather than continuing to blabber about this, how about we get right to the unboxing itself? All right, so here we go. This is the Rand McNally Overdrive R, excuse me, 7RV. The RV, of course, stands for 
recreational vehicle. Stay connected for all your RV adventures. Nice box. I uh, did take the cellophane off so that we could get into it a little more quickly here. And uh, also there was no glare involved. So let's take a look to see what's inside the box. It's kind of a Apple-esque type box. It's got those magnets in front. You open it up. It's pretty classy the way they've, uh, they've done this as far as the box is concerned. And we've got protective foam here. We'll get rid of that. And there's your obligatory uh, information regarding don't call, don't send it back to the store where you got to call us if you got a problem. And then the, uh, the manual, which I may actually have to read because there are a lot of features that I would like to learn how to use in this. But uh, there she is. So we'll do the manual. And we'll do that later. Uh, what else it looks like immediately? Well, it's, that doesn't come out so good. Let's see what this is. Okay, this looks like this is the power supply cord. Oh, I know what this is. This is the repeater and supply cord. This you put into, the, everybody recognizes this. This is the old, plug it into the cigarette lighter. And this is the power cord into the unit itself. And this is a fairly good um, mount. The gentleman who sold this to me did not have the um, base plate that kind of sits on the dashboard like a bean bag kind of thing. Didn't have that, and as a matter of fact, Garmin was out of them as well. But this is a really sophisticated uh, system, and uh, at least it's something that I can start with and, and mount the, uh, the GPS uh, on the dashboard, or maybe on the window. I don't know exactly where I'm going to get it. And then we take this off, and wow, there it is. Uh, it's hard to see this via the video, but uh, as it was explained to me, this is very much an Android tablet. It's got a real quality feel for it. It's kind of a rubberized texture in the back. Uh, there's some, uh, I guess, connectivity kind of diodes or whatever they're called. And then the screensaver, peel that off. And there she is, the unit itself. One of the things that this unit also has is a dash cam. So there's a camera on the back, as you can see, probably right up here. And it has a continuous loop. I think there's, I forget how many hours uh, it will take. And of course, that's kind of neat because if I can download that, I can, I can use that in some of my, my videos as, as we travel. Because I don't have a, uh, a GoPro that I can mount anywhere. And here we've got room for an SD card so that the video that's being recorded here, I can take an SD card out of that and put it into, load it into my computer and into my, into my um, editing software. So that'll be interesting. Some of the things that I'm going to be able to do here is, uh, is navigating, obviously. Um, I'm going to be able to put in the specifications of, of my particular rig. I'm going to be able to tell them how long it is, how much it weighs, how tall it is, how wide it is. And that's going to prevent the machine, even though it's going to calculate the quickest way for me, it's going to take all of those considerations into account so that it's not putting me through your local neighborhood with a 35-foot trailer behind me. So that's one of the things that <clears throat> I find is going to be most useful for me. The dash cam is there, um, a Bluetooth hand-free hand texting through it, although I've got that voice assistant on the car itself, and just a whole lot of other features that uh, are going to be very useful for me. What else has it got going on here? Some more foam. Oh, there's a screen protector. That's kind of neat. Nice to have one of those. Looks like there's more goodies here. Uh, what is in this black box? Aha! There it is. All right, lots of stuff. Yeah, I guess that's the end of it. All right, what have I got going on here? Well, there's a 3M stickamahickey if you want to really permanently put this on your dashboard, which I don't think I want to do, but uh, it's not coming off if, if you happen to want to use this. And we've got this is the real heart of the deal. As I was looking at that, uh, as I was looking at this, I, it looked like there was something wrong. And these three little male ends fit into these three female ends. And these are the connectors then that the 
unit itself, as you can see those back there, contact these and that's what makes the system so smart. And what I was told is this can actually work as a, um, well I forget exactly what he told me, but anyhow this little doohickey will go right into the, into the car if I want to use the car uh, speakers. Uh, which this would not automatically do. Apparently there's a three watt, which sounds like a lot, uh, three watt speakers that are uh, built right into this. So this would talk to me and hopefully in a loud enough fashion that I will be able to hear it as I'm going down the road. May have to put those hearing aids back in. And there's an option here for powering it up, which I'm gonna do uh, this evening, get it all powered up so it works. I believe my car, I don't, I'm pretty sure I have one up front, there is a power outlet so I may not have to, an actual plug now, so I may not have to use this adapter. I can probably use this one. So that'll be good. And there's a little antenna. Not sure where that goes, but we'll figure it out. And I forget what I must have taken out of this little bag already. So there you have it. This is the Rand McNally Overdrive 7 RV. And I'm really looking forward to using this. I will get back to you. As I say, this was just an unboxing so you can see what comes with the machine. Looks like everything you need, basically, except that uh, beanbag mount, which some of you may not want anyway. But the bottom line is uh, I'm going to use this for a while. Uh, I've got some uh, traveling through Indiana, excuse me, through Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan coming up uh, in the weeks following the escapade, and I'll certainly let you know. Uh, what my impressions are maybe in a uh, month or so after I've uh, given this a good shot. So I hope it lives up to its, its, uh, the hype. I'm real excited about it and I hope you've enjoyed this, this unboxing. Let me know if you'd like to see more of this. As I said, I'm going to do the tire pressure gauges anyway, but if you enjoy this stuff, I am a gadget freak, so I'm continuously you know, buying, maybe not as exciting as this, and certainly not as expensive as this, uh, I'll, I add to my arsenal of stuff as an RVer, and if you have any interest in seeing that, then put a comment in the video itself and let me know that uh, you've enjoyed this. So otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Take care and have a wonderful day.